Well, good morning. Merry Christmas Eve. Welcome to Central Christian Church. It's so nice to be in the house of the Lord with you. What a beautiful day that the Lord has made. And it even looks like Christmas outside after our 60 degree weather all week. So we're thankful for the snow and we're thankful that you were able to make it here today. Just a few announcements as we get started. These beautiful flowers are given by Dick Laszlo for his lovely wife, Jo, on her birthday. She is a Christmas birthday, so tomorrow is her birthday. So thank you for sharing those with us. We're so excited to celebrate in your birthday. If you are a guest with us today, we're so happy that you're here. We have pew cards in front of you. You're welcome to fill them out, and you can put them in the uh, offering box in the back. Just a great way for us to stay connected and keep you updated on all the fun things that we're doing. Uh, end of year gifts will be received through next Sunday for tax purposes. So if you would like to consider giving an extra donation for the holiday, that is through next Sunday. Um, our year-round fundraiser to support Central, make sure that your King Supers card is connected to the church. 5% of groceries and gas can come back to the church, uh, so make sure that you have that hooked up. Uh, voting members, uh, the budget approval ballot you received in the mail can be placed in the offering boxes today. So if you're looking for a place to put those. Uh, the office will be closed this week with no weekday events, so please call Pastor Nikki if you need something that can't wait until the new year. Hard to believe the new year is just around the corner. Uh, tonight, the candlelight service is at 7 p.m., and that is uh, one of the most uh, traditional and wonderful services of the year as we will light the candles um, in honor of Jesus' birth. All right, I will invite our worship team up to get started as we uh, begin this beautiful day. Oh, and welcome home, Ezekiel! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> There's a slight addendum to the bulletin. We are actually doing our first song before the baptisms. Um, so if everyone could stand as we are able as we sing together, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, which is page 119 in your hymnals or on the screen. Bind all peoples 
in one heart and mind. Bid envy, strife, and quarrel cease. Fill the whole world with he heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together today in your house of worship. God, we ask that you remove all those things that weigh so heavy on our hearts and minds so that we may be fully present in this time and in this place. God, may all we say, sing, think, and do be pleasing unto you now and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. If you are a visitor today, you are here on a very special day because not only is today Christmas Eve and Advent 4, but today we also are celebrating the baptisms of three of our young people here at Central Christian Church. And what a better day than on this Christmas Eve to receive their gift of baptism. The Lord Jesus told us to go into the world baptizing and making disciples of all nations, and that is what we will do today in the life of Eden Harris, Vivian Clapp, and Noah Petty. So let us pray. God, we ask that you bless these waters of baptism, and may they bring peace and holiness into the life of Eden and Vivian and Noah. God, watch over each of them as they enter this, these waters and be with them as they make their confession of faith and walk each step of their journey until they lie safely in your arms and everlasting life. God, we thank you for this opportunity to celebrate this holy and monumental day in their lives. May they feel our love and your presence all around them. Amen. Eden, I now invite you into the water. And I ask you, as I ask all believers, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and do you accept him as your Lord and Savior? If so, say, I do. I do. Having made your confession of faith, it is now my honor and my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, raised to everlasting life. Amen and amen. Vivian, I now invite you into the water. And I ask you the same question. Do you believe in Jesus the Christ? I do. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> Let's get over this way. Okay. Having made your confession of faith, it is now my privilege and my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Rise now into newness of life with Jesus the Christ. Look so your parents get a picture. <laughs> Noah, I invite you. And Noah, I'll ask you the same question. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and do you accept him as your Lord and Savior? I do. Having made your confession of faith, it is now my privilege and my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rise to newness of life. Right here so parents can get a picture. One of the special things about this baptism is that all three of these young people, I've had the privilege to work alongside of them, Vivian and Eden, their entire lives, and Noah for the last few years. And what I know about each of them is they are each strong leaders in their own way. They have the love of Christ in their hearts. And so what an honor and a privilege. And thank you all for being here. Let us pray. 
Most holy and gracious God, what an honor and a privilege to spend this time in your baptismal waters with three of your beloved children. God, we ask that you be with them each step of their journey through this life, protect them during the hard times, celebrate with them the mountaintop experiences, and hold them close when they are lonely or feel lost or afraid. God, be near to them this day and every day, and may they constantly know of your loving presence in their life and all around them. Be known to them, O Lord, and bless their families, O God, for we are so privileged and honored to share this journey of faith with them. It's in your holy name we pray always. Amen. Watch and waste for Christ's coming. Light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God. Hear God's promise of love from Luke 1, 46 through 50. Mary sings, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has, been, has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him for generation to generation. We light the candle of hope. We light the candle of joy. We light the candle of peace. We light the candle of peace. We light the candle of love. Now let us pray. God of hope, Prince of peace, author of joy, and Lord of love, your goodness and mercy is beyond our imagining. Teach us to love each other and all people, even as you love us in your Son, Jesus Christ. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. morning. I think a lot of our kids are still drying off from what a wonderful, cool experience. Was that amazing, getting to see that? I don't think that we've had kids baptized for a long time, so that was really exciting. And we are so excited for our brothers and sisters, right? Well, today is a special day. Anybody know what today is? Christmas Eve, that's right. So I have a little present for each of you. Looks like some of us maybe have gotten ahead. <laughs> Pass them on down and we'll make sure that our siblings get some. <clears throat> so what is this? It's a candy cane. I would say it's one of the most well-known um, symbols of Christmas, right? We get them all the time, we see them. We get them in our stockings, maybe. They decorate the Christmas tree. 
right? There's so many great places that we can see candy canes. And today I'm going to share something with you. It's called the legend of the candy cane. And maybe you've heard it before, but I'm going to tell you so you can remember. Come on up. All right, so this is the legend of the candy cane. Please hand this over to Eden. It says, look at the candy cane. What do you see? What color are the stripes? The stripes are red, like the blood shed for me. White is for my Savior, who is sinless and pure. And if you turn it this way, what letter does it look like? J. J. J is for Jesus, my Lord. That's for sure. And turn it around. It's a staff you will see. Jesus, my shepherd, was born for me. So this is just a regular candy cane. But if you think about it, it represents what Jesus has done for us, right? J for Jesus that was born for me on Christmas Eve, right? Red for the blood he shed for me. White for the sinless life that he lived. And a shepherd's staff for that he's always there guiding us, right? All right, friends, let's have a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for these children, and thank you for the wonderful things that they are going to do in the world, as three of them today have made their confession to follow you, and we are so blessed to be a part of their journey. Please help us all to grow and love, to love you and to follow you. Please help us remember the true reason for the season is the J, that Jesus was born for me. And help us all to enjoy this season and to remember all of the love that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends. Now, as we continue our service, let us sing the next song for today, which is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Page 150 in your hymnals, we'll be singing verses 1 and 3. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the new. Born King. Hail the heaven born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all he brings. Prison with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by. Join the no ye no more may die, born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Good morning, Merry Christmas Eve to all of you. Will you join me now in the pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer? Almighty God, we come into your presence this morning and we give you all thanks and praise. We stand in awe of your graciousness 
and your love. Open our hearts that we might feel your spirit in new and exciting ways. Loving God, you are the divine healer, and we remember before you those weighing heavy on our hearts and minds. We lift up Jim and Beth, Ruth and Jean, Dick and Joe, along with the many others that are on our hearts. We know you hear our prayers, and we trust that your promises are true. We also remember all those who are hurting this Christmas season, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, families that are divided, those who will find themselves alone or feeling lonely. God, we ask for your presence and your comfort. Grant us peace and help us to find the joy found only in you. We remember with joy those celebrating birthdays this Christmas. We give thanks for Joe, Jennifer, Bobby, and Rachel, and we pray they each have a happy birthday and a year full of joy. Finally, God, we lift up our brothers and sisters around the globe, especially those living in all the war-torn places whose everyday existence is surrounded by violence and destruction. Grant them safety and security. We pray for the leaders of this country and those around the world. May they lead with your heart. God, we pray for peace on earth. Spirit God, our light shining in the darkness, we thank you for your love that came into the world in the person of your son, Jesus. Help us to be present for this amazing gift, both this Christmas season and every day. We pray for peace, hope, joy, and love. And lead us in the prayer your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 1. I'll be reading verses 46 through 55. Hear now a word from God. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown great strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to his ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Here ends the reading according to Luke. Will you pray with me? Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So can you believe it? Can you believe we've made it all the way to Advent 4? Or in the world, we call it Christmas Eve. And so I welcome you all here today, and I'm so glad to be able to share this holy day with you. And before we get much further, I just want to say, Jim and Beth, it's so great to see you here, and I'm so glad you're here today. And to all of our visitors, again, a warm welcome from us. We hope that this service touches your heart in a special way. So our scripture from this morning, as you see, it comes from Mary. And right before these texts, the very lines right before this, Mary shows up at Elizabeth's house. And I'm not sure what all you know about Mary and Elizabeth, but they were both experiencing miraculous births. Elizabeth, they think, was at least 60 years old. 
So I don't know about you, but that's getting close, and I don't need to have a baby. And so Elizabeth is a six months pregnant when Mary shows up that day. And we know, no one knows the exact age of Mary, but we know that she was a teenager. And a lot of records think probably around 14 to 16. And we also know that she was a virgin. And so therefore, this, her pregnancy was also a miracle. And we know that the angel had just appeared to Mary and said, Mary, guess what? You're going to give birth to baby Jesus. And Mary said, what are you talking about? I'm a teenager. I don't even have a boyfriend. What are you saying? And the angel said, don't worry. God is with you, and you will marry Joseph, and you will give birth to Jesus, and he will be the Savior of the world. And what I love about this passage is as soon as Mary hears this, the very next line says that Mary took off to go be with Elizabeth. Elizabeth was her cousin. And I imagine that Mary thought, I need some advice. I need to be around someone who loves me, who understands, who will encourage me. And I love this relationship of Mary and Elizabeth because think about it. When you have had your hardest of days, when you have walked the longest of miles, how amazing is it to have a friend give you a hug and say, I'm so glad to see you. Set, let's have a cup of tea. How are you doing? And it says that Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months. And I believe that part of that was she was helping Elizabeth get ready. And I also think it's because Mary knew she needed that support and that love. Because Mary had to be so scared. I was 32 when I had my first child, and I couldn't breathe. And here's Mary as a teenager, just starting out life. My daughter is 12 and a half, and I can't even imagine. Eden, don't get ideas. And so I started, as I thought about this, I thought, don't we all relate to Mary, to that fear, to that uncertainty she must have felt? Her life has just been torn upside down. You see, Mary didn't come from royalty. She wasn't like rich and famous, the one you would think God would pick to be the mother of baby Jesus. No, Mary was a peasant. She was an unknown figure. The world didn't know Mary. She was just a teenager. They didn't have malls back then, but if they did, I think she'd be going to the mall and hanging out with friends and playing music too loud and taking showers that lasted way too long. All the things teenagers do. And yet Mary has been chosen to be the son, the mother of the son of God. And so I would expect that Mary would run into Elizabeth's house and be crying and trembling and say, Elizabeth, what has happened? Help me. But instead, when Mary speaks to Elizabeth, it says the first thing that happens is that baby that's in Elizabeth's tummy jumps for joy. That was John the Baptist. And we know later in John's life, he will appear to say, prepare the way of the Lord for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so even in those beginning days, as Mary spoke, the Holy Spirit had already began to work in John's life. And when Mary spoke and Elizabeth felt that baby, she said, blessed are you among women. And I believe that's exactly what Mary needed to hear. Because I believe that that moment reminded Mary that one, she was not alone. She had the love of Elizabeth with her. But more importantly, she had God with her. Emmanuel, God with us, God in us, God all around. And so Mary, right after this interaction with Elizabeth, we have this famous song of Mary. Many call it the Magnificat. And this is one of the most famous songs that you will find in the Bible. 
Because while the expectation would be that Mary was full of fear and trembling and uncertainty, instead we see that she immediately says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Now I want to get real for just a moment. For many of us, this Christmas season can seem pretty hard. If we struggle with money, this is a season that it's hard to think, where are we going to get the money to give the kids everything they want? And we know that many families are divided, some families so divided that they can't even share a meal with one another. And there are many that will be missing loved ones from their dining room table. A seat or two will be empty and hearts are broken. And we know that we live in a wor world which is at war with one another, and it is a hard season. The Christmas carols tell us to be full of joy and cheer, but I think we can really relate to Mary, because Mary's uncertainty and fear is quite just like our uncertainty and fear. Now, maybe we're not having an unexpected pregnancy, but we do have a lot of unexpected twists and turns that come into our life. And some of us may be thinking, all this Christmas cheer, that's great for you, but how do I understand this joy? How do I experience the joy when my heart is broken? And I think Mary gives us the answer. Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in my God, for he has looked with favor on the lowliest of his servants. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. If we look to the world or our circumstances to bring us the joy this holiday season, we are going to be lacking of good cheer. But if we keep our eyes on the main thing, if we focus on Jesus the Christ, if we put our attention on that little baby born in a manger so long ago that we know ultimately will bring us our salvation, then that is why we can shout for joy. We talked a few weeks ago how joy isn't something that comes and goes like happiness. Happiness is temporary, but joy in the Lord is permanent. And this joy doesn't come because we got the switch game we were hoping for, or that we got a new car. I have dreams. And it doesn't come because, you know, we got a card in the mail. This joy comes because we know that Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, everlasting God, is with us and in us and all around us. And Mary reminds us that he looked on favor of the lowliest of his servants. And if there's not a word that brings me comfort more than that, because there are many days when probably like you, I feel like I might be one of the lowliest of the servants. And yet this scripture reminds us that God does not call us to be perfect. God calls us to love one another. God calls us to see God in the face of all we meet each and every day. God calls us to see one another's hearts and not just listen to one another's words. God is looking to see how have we loved one another. How have we fed the sick? How have we served the lowliest in our neighborhoods? This past year, I have had a lot of people pour love into my life. And I don't know how I could have done this year without the love and the generosity of so many people. But what I've come to realize is when I see someone sharing love with me, that that is also God pouring love into my life. So this Christmas season, this Advent 4, I challenge you to remember that God is with us. 
And that if you find yourself, your heart longing for someone you miss, or you find yourself wishing for a family you just don't have, or you're wondering how will I ever get everything on the table or the presents wrapped, or how will I be nice when I feel a little cranky inside? That's my question. I challenge us to be like Mary and to sing loudly and proudly to the world. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God. For he has looked with favor on the lowliest of his servants. And surely that means he loves me too. So if you feel lost and alone, know that you are never alone. The spirit of Jesus Christ, that baby in a manger that we so patiently wait on, walks with us now and forevermore. <clears throat> and there is never a time, <clears throat> excuse me, there is never a time that we are separated from God. There is never a time that we disappoint God so much that God just has to take a break. God knows our imperfections. God created us to be just who we are. And God calls us to go into the world to love one another and to love God above all else. So if you are struggling this Christmas season with health, with finances, with loneliness, with fear, regrets, I pray that you can leave them at God's altar today and that you may feel the joy of the Lord as the angels say, peace on earth. This evening we will gather back in our sanctuary to light the Christ candle and to share the love of Christ with one another. And as we light the candles, we will sing Silent Night, and then we'll go straight in to joy to the world. For we know this babe being born did not just come for a minute, or didn't just come to the people of that day, but Jesus the Christ reigns supreme in our lives and in our world this day and for eternity. So I'm going to have us do something different. We're going to say verses 46 through 48 together. And I'm not a singer, so I won't make you sing it. But I do want you to say it loud and proud. And we'll pretend there's melody in the background. So let us say it together. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliest of his servants. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. And holy is his name. God's love, God's presence, Emmanuel, God with us, is true this day and every day when our hearts are ready to accept it, and when our hearts are broken in a million pieces, God is with us, and God's love never leaves us, now and forever into eternity, when we join with the heavenly chorus, singing hallelujah, peace on earth, goodwill to all. Amen. If you would like to join with this church family, you can come forward during the singing of our invitational hymn, or you can just give me a call this week. We do invite you to stand as you are able as we sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. i 
Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching o'er silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, o'er the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. You may be seated. We've come to the part of our service where we have the privilege and the blessing to give back to God just a small portion of the many gifts that God brings into our lives each and every day. Here in our church, we're not passing the plates, but we do have a locked box in the back of the sanctuary as well as one by the cookie table. Um, we encourage you to give generously and joyfully. You can also give online at Givelify or drop a check in the mail to the church office. Again, we ask that you give back to God joyfully and generously for all the many gifts God has brought into our lives. And for this Advent season, in place of the doxology, we've been singing verse 1 of, others, of the Father's love begotten. It is printed on the screen. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to give back to you just a small portion of the many, many gifts you bring into our lives each and every day. God, open our eyes to the blessings all around us so that we don't miss out on a single one. And God, we ask that you take these gifts given today and bless them and multiply them to help bring your reign of peace here on earth. God, we love you, and we are so excited to be your hands and feet in this world. Amen. So it's hard for me to believe that tomorrow is Christmas morning. And typically this time of year, I feel like a little elf running around trying to get everything ready. And this year, I kind of feel more like a chicken with my head cut off. And so um, Christmas spirit has been hard to come by sometimes this season, if I'm just being honest. And the other day I was at Costco trying to buy the last minute stuff with all the rest of Colorado. Um, I probably saw all of you there. And as I was going through, I was kind of being a little cranky in my heart. And I was thinking, you know, do we really have to even eat 
Like, do people have to eat on Christmas? Surely they don't really have to eat. And as I came around the, the, the corner and I was feeling a little grumpy, I saw a woman, I'm guessing she was about 85 to 88 years old, just taking a guess, and she was dressed from head to toe as an elf. And I stopped in my tracks and just watched her because she was just singing a little hymn, like humming to herself and putting stuff in her cart and lifting up shirts and putting down shirts. And I don't even know who she was shopping for, but she had the Christmas spirit. And I found myself for about five minutes just following her around because I realized she was exactly what I needed. It was like God showed up in the produce aisle, dressed as an elf, for my heart to say, see, it's okay to have joy. And we know that we here in our congregation, we come to the communion table every week because we know that it's not that we have to, but we know that we must because our hearts need the time to recenter and refocus. We need the time to share this meal with Jesus the Christ. We need this moment to lay our burdens down and to be reminded that we are not alone, that we travel with a great band of witnesses. We have friends and family here on this earth to walk the path with us as well as we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses of all our loved ones who have gone on before. And this Christmas season, we join at this table because we know that our spirits are weary, that we are all too busy and too distracted. And my prayer is that maybe we won't dress like an elf at Costco, but I pray that we can feel that joy, that joy down deep in our toes, because we know we have a relationship and that that babe in a manger not only knows who we are, but knows our name. And not just our name, but has prepared a place for us at the table and saves our seat so that it is always ready for us. We come to this table just as we are each and every week. If your heart is overflowing with joy and excitement and you wish you could just skip down the aisle in an elf costume, you are welcome and invited at the Lord's table. And if you barely made it here today because your heart is so heavy and each step hurts to take it, you are welcome and invited at this table. This is not our table. This is the Lord's table, and it is the Lord's invitation that you come. If you are a visitor and did not pick up a communion cup when you entered, we have some in the back. You have time still to grab one before we take communion. But here in our church, all are welcome to partake in the Lord's Supper. And I pray as we break the bread and we drink the cup, you will feel your heart begin to be made whole. And that you will feel the spirit of love all around you and within you. Because you can never venture outside of God's love and protection and salvation. So won't you come to the table this day just as you are? Come and taste and see that indeed the Lord is good. Come and experience the ultimate welcome table. Amen. Our song for communion is, uh, there's a song in the air, which is page 159 in your hymnals or on the screen. There's a song in the air, there's a star in the sky, 
There's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry. And the soul reigns its fire while the angel choirs sing. And the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king. Tumult of joy o'er the wonderful birth for the virgin sweet boy is the lord of the earth see the star rains its fire while the angel choirs sing for the manger of bethlehem cradles a king we rejoice in the lights and we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throng. And we welcome the glorious gospel they bring, and we greet in the cradle our Savior and King. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. As heaven soars above the earth, so great the love of God for us. All my being, bless the Lord, remembering the goodness of God. Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks, he blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Take in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he blessed it and said, this cup is a new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God now and forever. Our closing hymn for the service is Emmanuel, Emmanuel, which is page 134 in your hymnals or on the screen. If we could all stand as we are able as we close out the service. We will sing it twice through.
I just wanted to remind you we'll be having a candlelight service this evening at 7 p.m. where we'll light our Christ candle and pass the light of Christ around. If you are hoping to sing all the traditional hymns, come tonight. Um, we'll be having a lessons and carols as well as next Sunday we'll be having a carol sing of all the Christmas carols um, so we get them all out of our system until next year again. So let us now receive the benediction. Go in peace knowing that Emmanuel is all around and that the love of Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and the forgiveness of God is with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace to love and serve one another. Merry Christmas Eve. May the Prince of Peace bring you peace. <laughs>